Good evening, sisters and brothers, and good evening, one and all. Welcome to this evening's evening prayer. Today, this evening is uh, Friday evening, Friday the 11th of December. And so let's, uh, let's come to, to say goodbye to this day and to, to entrust our night to our great God and our Savior. Let's pray. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Reveal among us the light of your presence, that we may behold your power and glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of light and darkness. To you be glory and praise forever. As evening falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. May your word be a lantern to our feet and a light upon our path, that we may behold your coming among us. Strengthen us in our stumbling weakness and free our tongues to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. And um, our canticle this evening from Psalm, eight, from Psalm 85. O God, will you not give us life again that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Truly, his salvation is near to those who fear him that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth and righteousness look down from heaven. Righteousness shall go before him and direct his steps in the way. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may the light of your presence <clears throat> come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. And our collect this evening. Heal us, O God, from all our afflictions and keep us steadfast in your love. Bind up our wounds, raise us from death and lead us to fullness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And our evening confession. From the old prayer book, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done and that there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them, O God, that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. And our evening psalm, our psalm this evening is Psalm 90, Psalm 90. Psalm 90. Psalm 90. Psalm 
Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn people back to dust, saying, Return to dust, you mortals. A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. Yet you sweep people away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. In the morning it springs up new, but by evening it is dry and withered. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. All our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. Our days may come to 70 years or 80 if our strength endures. Yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. If only we knew the power of your anger, your wrath is as great as the fear that is due your name or that is your due. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Relent, Lord, how long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen trouble. May your deeds be shown to your servants, your splendor to their children. May the favor of the Lord our God rest upon us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Oh man, okay. Psalm 90 is one of those um, psalms that is read uh, sometimes at funerals or regarding illness and so on because it talks about our life passing away like a grass that springs up in the morning but by the evening is wither and dry. And uh, you sweep people away in the sleep of death. Uh, so that's... And, and all of that, sisters and brothers, is the psalmist saying, our lives are fleeting. Our lives are like vapor. It's gone. The, our, our physical life, the psalmist is talking about the, the physical um, material life that exists on the earth. Even if we have lived to see 80 years, he says, some, our days are 70 or 80 if we get strength. Uh, even if we have 80, it's still like that. It's still gone. Because we do not live forever in this mortal flesh. And so it's a, and, and it, it is a reminder. It is a reminder. Because we, we, sometimes we behave in our world as if we are going to live forever in this physical body and in this mortal, in this mortal world. And, and, and the psalm is a reminder to us that even if you get 80, years and some get 90 some even get 100 the point is it's like a vapor it's gone because it's going to come to an end one day and 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 notice he says even the best of those years have trouble and sorrow it's it's one thing to know that the, the end is coming it's another thing thing to realize that even the best of those 80 years um have trouble and sorrow uh, I mean, not to mention the worst part of those years. So the, it's, the psalmist is simply reminding us of life and of the fleetingness of life, the shortness of life, um, and the fact that life outside of God, uh, well, not just life outside of God, but this life, life in this world, is, 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 it passes by. <laughs> and, and, and in a sense, we are not to hold on too much to it. And therefore, verse 12, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. This sense that we are to, we are to take reckon of our days so that we may gain wisdom 
um, take note of our days. Don't just let them pass by, you know, every day, one day passes and another day passes. Take note of them, reckon them, number them, notice your days. Um, and don't let them simply ebb away uh, 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 until such time when you are 80 and that's it. Uh, or whenever you, wherever you get to. Uh, and, and, and there is no more to come. The shortness of life. Let's read uh, Keller's um, comment. Verse 4 is one of the most widely quoted verses in the Psalms. Uh, a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by. Because it, com it comforts us when we are frustrated with God's timing. Time moves slowly for us as we crawl from moment to moment. God who inhabits eternity sees all of history in a single moment. So his timetable is unlikely to match our own. The Psalms author, Moses, seems to look at life from the vantage point of old age. From where we can finally see, as God does, that our time here is short. Like this psalm, let this psalm make you wise before your time. That is what it means to number our days. When you still can determine to not waste your life on trifles, soon it will be too late. And that's the point of the psalm, and so Tim Keller captures it very well. Um, let the psalm make you wise before your time notice your time your days um use wisdom every day because it is going to be gone just like that that's the point of the psalmist and, and sisters and brothers we know i mean you don't have to be old to die uh, i mean death comes to all and sundry uh, i mean the psalmist is speaking about natural means yeah, then the, the natural way of going you, you, we all grow old and die uh, by God's grace, but some don't. Some pass away early. Some are cut off in the midst of their prime, in the midst of youth and so on. So the point is, <clears throat> take note of your days. Um, use them wisely. Get wisdom to use the days wisely because we don't know when those days will be gone, just like that. Um, and 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 a thousand years in your sight are like a day. This is God. God's timing is different from ours. Our timing is very. I mean, God. God is eternal. God is eternal. God is everlasting. We are not. We are mere mortals. Uh, we operate within time. God operates outside of time. God knows the end from the beginning. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the big, the first and the last, and so on. And so who better to en to, for us to entrust our days to? The one who is the ancient of days. So let's pray. Lord, life is going by so fast. It frightens us unless we remember your eternity. We are as rootless as tumbleweeds and will be blown about all our lives unless we are dwelling, unless you are our dwelling place. In you we are home. What I, have, what I have in you, I can never lose and will never... Uh, and will... Let's say that again. What I have in you, I can never lose and will have forever. I praise you for this unfathomable comfort. Amen. Yeah, just to say that's one of the verses I was thinking of. Verse 1, Lord, you have been our dwelling place. Dwelling place. God himself is where we dwell. We live in God. And that's where we ought to be. If we are to experience his grace and his wisdom in numbering our days. Let's go to a New Testament reading, which is um, Matthew chapter 5 from verse chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15 from verse 29 to the end. Matthew 15, 29 to the end. Jesus left there and went along the Sea of Galilee. Then he went up on a mountainside and sat down. Great crowds came to him, bringing the lame, the blind, the crippled, the mute, and many others. 
and laid them at his feet and he healed them. The people were amazed when they saw the mute speaking, the crippled made well, the lame walking and the blind seen, and they praised the God of Israel. Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion for these people. They have already been with me three days and have nothing to eat. I do not want to send them away hungry or they may collapse on the way. His disciples answered, where could we get enough bread in this remote place to feed such a crowd? How many loaves do you have? Jesus asked. Seven, they replied, and a few small fish. They told the crowd to sit down on the ground. Then he took the seven loaves and the fish and when he had given thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples, and they in turn to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. Afterwards, the disciples picked up seven basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was 4,000 men, besides women and children. After Jesus had sent the crowd away, he got into the boat and went to the vicinity of Magadan. Okay, um, th this is not deja vu, um, <laughs> just in case you're thinking, wait a minute, I've, I've heard that story before. In chapter 14, Jesus fed 5,000, okay? Here, he's feeding 4,000. Both stories are very different and very similar, of course. In both stories, you have Jesus saying, I have compassion on these people. We need to give them something to eat. The disciples so where, where are we going to find this food? There's so many people. Jesus said, well, what do you have? Same point uh, from the last, from the other story. Except in this case, we don't know how many fish. It says seven loaves and a few small fish. Whereas in, in, in the case of the, of, uh, of the, the 5,000, uh, where is it? The, the feeding of the 5,000. We are told how many fish that was given, five loaves and, and two small fishes, five loaves and two small fishes. In this case, we have seven loaves and a few fish. And we are also told that he fed them all again, and they are satisfied, and they picked up seven basketfuls of broken pieces, leftovers, uh, so that none is wasted. Not just is not wasted, but there is no pollution. You know, the, <laughs> I've ever been on those campsites where people camp and when they leave, they leave their rubbish behind. Well, not Jesus. <laughs> Jesus and 4,000 people ate and Jesus decided, we need to clean up this place. We are not going to leave it with the crumbs and the, of the fish and the, and the bread all over the place. We need to clean it up. So they collected Four, um, seven basketfuls of broken pieces. Now, in the case of the 5,000, it was 12 basketfuls. Two different story, very similar, teaching the same lesson, that Jesus is our all-sufficient one, the one who provides for us our daily food, the one who, who, who opens the, the cupboard, the opens the bank, the food bank, so that we can, we can dine, we can eat, we can be we can be, be be well we can be safe so yes jesus is our our provider sisters and brothers jesus is the one when you have nothing else when the cupboard is bare entrusted to him give him what you have give him the little you have you have seven seven loaves and that's it give it to him he will bless it and he will multiply it and he will grant you his his grace but of course of course, it's more than it's more than just material stuff that Je Jesus Jesus is not teaching us about material things. I know it's easy for us to draw that conclusion. Jesus is teaching about himself. He is the bread of heaven. He is the one who's multiplied and come to us to feed us and satisfy us and 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 and, and, and sustain us. So it is it's not about material bread even though he provides that as well it's more so that he is the bread from heaven and in fact that's the lesson that is taught when the when the when 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 the 5000 feeding is repeated in John's gospel
and, and, and of course, it goes along with all of these healings that Jesus is doing. Um, I mean, all these people are brought to Jesus and Jesus healed them all. And, 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 and it's a reminder that Jesus is the sustainer. Jesus is the one who, who brings wholeness, completeness to our lives. Whatever our need, whatever our problem, Jesus is there to, to put, all, put it all back together, to mend the broken heart, to mend the broken lives, broken relationships, broken bodies. Jesus is the one who is there to mend all the brokenness in us. And to top it off, he provides himself as the food for our souls. And so there we have it. If Jesus if you, if you don't have Jesus, your brokenness will never be mended, sisters and brothers. It is Jesus and Jesus alone who can mend the brokenness in our souls, in our lives. And so we bring it to him. And so let's do that now as we pray. Lord Jesus, we, we read that you, you, you heal the, the blind, the crippled, the lame, the, the dumb, the deaf, Lord. We pray for that kind of healing today in our world. Not just physically, of course. We pray for those who are physically hurting in body tonight. And bodies and minds. We, we pray for them. Of course we pray, Lord, that you'll hear their prayer for healing because you are the healer. But Lord, so many in our world are dumb and blind and deaf and crippled and lame. And all that because they don't know you. Not physically, but in spiritually, they are broken. And you are the only one who can bring healing to brokenness, to broken relationships, to broken bodies, to broken minds, to broken souls. We pray for those tonight who are broken, who are experiencing some form of brokenness, some sort of... Uh, dissatisfaction and discomfort in their lives we pray lord for that for, for for them to experience your healing touch your power your all sufficiency tonight lord you are the bread that comes down from heaven you are the one who sustains us you are the bread that that gives that, that gives us life that 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 supports our souls we pray for those tonight, for all of us, that we may experience you as the bread of our lives. And Lord, we pray for those who are um, on the margin of, the of, of, of food tonight. Those who are, who, who are finding it hard to, 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 to put bread on their table. Literal food. Lord, we pray for them tonight. Those who have to make a decision between whether they, they can eat or heat their homes. We pray for them tonight. Those who are struggling economically and financially, Lord, we pray for them tonight. Hear our prayer for, for them tonight, we pray, Lord, because you are the one who provides food for, our, for not only for our souls, but for our bodies, for our lives, for our families as well. And so, Lord, whatever little we have, Help us by your grace to offer it to you, to bring our few loaves and fish as an offering to your altar and lay them at your feet. And bless them, Lord, we pray. Bless the little we have so that we can be satisfied in you and, and see how you multiply it for our benefit, for our sus sustenance, for our salvation for our wholeness and for our well-being and so lord we pray that you'll give us grace not not just to take the little for ourselves but to offer you the the, the final bit that we have so that lord we know that you you have compassion on us we know you have compassion on us and so we pray that you'll do that as we offer ourselves to you and lord we offer ourselves of course, not just our food, not just our material things. Of course, we, we offer that as well. But we offer our bodies as a living sacrifice to you. 
Lord, we pray that you will uh, take us, O oh God, and use us for your kingdom building. Lord, whatever little we have in us, we offer it on the, on the altar of living sacrifice. And we pray that you'll help us to know how to, to, to know your will, your pleasing and, 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 and perfect will for our lives as we continue our pilgrim journey in this world until such time when by your call we, we, we are joined with you in, and all those who have gone before us. But in the meantime, Lord, we entrust the little we, are, we have and the little we are into your hands and we ask for your for your fatherly uh, care ma your, your healing your grace your touch tonight lord as we offer ourselves to you as we finish this day we pray that you will sustain us through the night thank you thank you lord our oh god thank you lord jesus for providing for us today, for sustaining us, for keeping us through this day. And we ask that you will watch over us tonight as we sleep. And all those for whom we pray, all those, Lord, who are, who seek your mercy and your, your grace tonight in their lives. Remember them, Lord, remember them in your compassion tonight, even as you remembered these 4,000 people plus, when you had compassion on them, have compassion on these lists of people in our prayer list tonight. And hear their, hear their heart's desire. Remember Mr. Gray today, as his brother is laid to rest, we pray for him, remember him tonight. And all the others, hear their prayer. Hear all our prayers tonight, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Keep us, O Lord, as the apple of your eye. Hide us under the shadow of your wings. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O gracious light, pure brightness of the everlasting Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord, and in your mercy. Defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of your only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy upon me, a sinner, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy upon us sinners. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy upon this sinful world. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace, his comfort, and his all-sufficient grace and rest tonight, sisters and brothers, as you sleep. Amen. Have a good night, one and all.